वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी गैलेक्सी ऑफ द फैकल्टी और अक्रॉस द कंट्री आई एम रियली हैपी टू सी सच काइंड ऑफ फेसेज एंड द लर्नेड फैकल्टी ऑन द स्क्रीन और ए सिंगल स्क्रीन If I try my best to see all these at a moment, it's not possible. I think so. But in today's world, I can see all of you on a single screen, and it is wonderful experience. Yeah. And academic uh, activity started by Siva, particularly for the newcomers, those who do not have the time to go there and learn on physical basis. And in such COVID crisis period, we are. the physical classes physical conferences physical seminars and the workshops are not possible in that circumstance and scenario these kind of activity are highly appreciated with the ioa pg e platform program of the ioa that is a bhal mark and bunch mark program of the ioa till date such kind of program not happened actually previously and the many resident doctors across the country are giving a lot of congratulations well wishes and request to continue it for the year similarly dr sip shankar our dynamic io president elect has started this series on the trauma particularly the nail and plate fixation is definitely benefit the youngster and the persons those who are having experience and treating the trauma cases and the total number of orthopedic practice is based on the orthopedic trauma 60 to 70% so the process and the program for trauma fixation and trauma management is really appreciable president alexa i congratulate you and my rest of dynamic team are president vice president dr ramesh dr atul srivastava and my joint secretary dr sandeep dr sanjay manish dhawan are equally having support to the whole cabinet do such kind of program regularly wish you all the best have a nice day and go ahead please thank you very much jai ioa jai hind so that we can hear you yes, sir very clearly if you have any doubts please un unmute yourself and you can ask your ask your doubts and then again go on mute thank you everyone thank you sir sir you can continue okay, okay. good morning everybody uh, thank you arjun for this uh, trauma series you have started through meril uh, thank you president dr rc meena for your inaugural uh, talk to start this session i'll be talking about what is new with dhs and pfn and pfna2 and is there any gold standard friends the uh, mr gopal dodwani has been behind me for the last one month for this webinar and uh, he the main person for me being today here i know gopal for last 15 years he has come with me at, uh, and assisted me at so many workshop this is a picture at uh, patiala medical college this is in cochin this is in dhanbad in jharkhand so so many places where i have conducted workshops he has come and he is a great asset while i am conducting workshop on live surgery professor jinsi wale yes i know he is a very uh, learned faculty today we have even dr kapadia also very learned faculty we have for sharing their knowledge uh, jinsi wale again because of mr dodwani only i could meet him sometime in 2011 or 12 i don't know exactly because uh, i had come for a workshop in uh, uh, indore at the time subsequently we conducted a uh, few workshop together this is at uh, during mp iwa coin at jabalpur at jinsi wale and myself conducted the pfn workshop uh, with this uh, brief introduction i will start my talk of uh, dhs versus pfn versus uh, pfn a2 friends uh, we have two implants one is surface implant in the form of dhs and we have a intramedullary implant in the form of pfn what is new in the treatment yes we know now that dhs can be treated 
in addition with tsp or by intramedial augmentation to get better results because dhs alone may not be uh, sometime sufficient even with pfn with the availability of ct scan and other thing we know that the lateral wall problem is there so we can do wiring or plating and we also have newer uh, latest intramedial implants like pfn a2 uh, zimmer natural nail trigen nail halifax nail so many nails are coming in the market with so many nails available the choice uh, it's like uh, when we go to hotel so many things are there uh, and uh, we we don't know what which one to order and we always see somebody sitting next to the table whatever he is eating that looks fine even after you order the same similarly if you are doing pfn a2 if somebody shows a pair of trigen uh, you feel that yes i should have done a trigen like that that's what we feel so let's discuss is there any gold standard for this uh, uh, intramedial implants also at the end the treatment or implant for uh, it fracture is still debatable it depends on the experience of the surgeon setup familiarity uh, implants availability and everything it's not scientific but definitely plays a role in india that is the socio economic status of the patient elderly non productive patient at the home nobody is uh, there to spend money on them poor insurance coverage so uh, the surgery uh, cost money people don't expect this thing to happen this is a suddenly a a bolt in the blue for them if somebody sustains a fracture and they have not uh, made the money available for that so it, they had to uh, do so many jugglery to get the money so that is all the things which uh, decides about uh, uh, treatment part so what i am going to do is i'll discuss the history of intramedial nails from 1980 onwards first then i will compare dhs versus pfn that is any intramedial implant then let me talk about uh, augmentation of dhs and pfn then whether single screw is good or double screw is good then finally is there a gold standard available for the intramedial implant these are the four parts i have decided to do i cannot complete the history of intramedial nails without taking the name of dr haldar so i have met him at so many occasions even i have visited his home in halifax he is the one who designed the halifax nail he keeps coming to our in india so many times for so many lectures even recently i have conducted three webinars with him on uh, uh, ortho tv you can see him and his uh, talks in that so he designed it sometime in 1984 a intramedial halifax nail so this is dr subhash shaldas nail he presented this in european congress and there they copied his design and they came out with a similar design nail but dr haldar didn't keep quiet he went to the international court and got the patent and they renamed the haldar halifax nail as gamma nail and it was marketed and we all started using them there was lot of problem with haldar uh, gamma nail so pfn came to the market we will discuss what are the problems little later so you can see the whole history of gamma nail until today uh, by dr haldar stock you can take a screenshot of this uh, 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 picture and you can see dr haldar stock on gamma nail and halifax nail in our ortho tv program which uh, i moderated the session the problem of gamma nail was is a large implant 18 mm proximally the subtrochanteric area is the most area it, you had to weave to get the nail inside sliding mechanism because it's a single screw many of the time it used to get jammed superior cutting through especially if there is slight wear a superior cutting through was very very common then single screw whenever you insert a single screw without a derotational pin always head spins especially in basic cervical fractures then interlocking distal is too near to the tip so uh, at the tip fracture used to happen and there was no dynamic interlocking possible in these nails these are some of the problems of the gamma nail so the surgeons came together and decided to design a design smaller proximal this is 15 to 60 mm proximally two screws instead of one uh, distal locking away and distal locking dynamization possible in uh, all these things were uh, designed and the pfn came into market 
so mm-hmm. this is the indian version of the pfn actually our indian version of the pfn is much more better than the original uh, synthesis pfn i'll come to that little later how i feel like that friends over the last 15 years newer nails have flooded the market like pfn2 trigen zimmer nail halifax nail so many nails have come so let's discuss all this the uh, at the last part of my talk because i don't want to start with a the wrong message let me talk about how to get the good result first then let's discuss about whether these nails are really good or bad at the end we all have seen this classification by the ao the a1 type of fractures are simple fractures and a2 and a3 type of fractures are the uh, fractures which are uh, unstable fractures for a stable fracture dhs is the treatment of choice for a unstable fracture pfn is the treatment of choice we all know that dhs are the sliding hip screw because it slides and allows continuous collapse at the fracture site it's a gold standard uh, i have my own technique of keyhole dhs with a small single stitch incision i insert this dhs i have demonstrated twice during the ganga trauma course this is the from the clinical picture of the same patient you can see uh, two video this is a 25 this video and this is a 40 minutes video on youtube and you can search for a keyhole dhs or even the search for dr shivshankar and see these videos uh, where i have demonstrated with a single stitch is implied so that is about the dhs part i also do pfn i also do all sorts of pfn i don't say that i only do regular pfn i do halifax nail i do a trigen nail i do pfn to i do znn everything here they badly communicated fracture in a 75 lady post a wall uh, missing i used the halifax nail and you can see the post a wall is missing this is in one month post op x ray this is a three months you can see that the post a wall which was missing is being formed as per the wood floor bone forms where it is required at eight months you can see total restoration of the proximal part of the femur could be achieved it's not the implant which is important it's the reduction and the placement of the screw is very very important the literature says that pfn is a good implant for invasive surgery for unstable fracture but if you have to open it's better to do PF, uh, dhs another article pfn is an excellent implant for the treatment of unstable fractures for a stable fracture again it's the dhs pfn is a good implant for unstable fracture another article in journal sliding hip screw or dhs is superior for a1 type of fractures this this uh, trochanteric fractures or a1 type of fractures again cochrane database in 2008 they say that sliding hip screw is superior to just per trochanteric fracture or a1 type of fractures so the level of evidence what available about 10 years back was for a per trochanteric fracture or a1 type of fracture dhs is the treatment of choice for a unstable fracture either the lateral wall is fractured or the lesser trochanteric fracture uh, pfn is the implant of choice but this article in jbgs in 2008 Uh, it was uh, like uh, salt put on a wound so this uh, talked about there was no evidence to use pfn in spite of that people or surgeons preferred pfn you can see at 1999 97% of the surgeons were doing dhs whereas uh, only 3% of surgeons were doing pfn whereas in 2006 you can see that only 33% from 97% only it dropped to 33% of the people doing still dhs and majority of them have shifted to pfn in spite of there is no evidence clinically to say that pfn is better for per trochanteric fracture because surgeons like you and me like to do pfn for whatever the reason the scar is less pain is less even in stable fracture we try to do pfn that is the reason why people start doing pfn so the aos changed its guidelines in 2014 there is a moderate evidence to support the use of either dhs or a intermedullary device for stable a1 type of fractures so the latest guidelines of the aos says for stable fracture per trochanteric fracture pfn can be used earlier they were only telling for unstable fracture but now they have given treatment for stable fracture that was what i was telling even from 2008 onwards you can see this is an x-ray in 2008 stable fracture the elderly doctor stable fracture i had treated with a pfn on the right side he came with a left sided fracture in 
2009. This is unstable factor. You can see that the set of broker. I have done a paper. So my choice is either stable or unstable fracture to PFL. Why I say this? Learn a technique on a simple stable fracture, then you can go to difficult fracture, unstable fractures. We learn car driving on ground where there are no people or there is no traffic. Similarly, start doing PFL on cracked, undisplaced, pertrochanted fractures. Once you know the technique properly, then you can do complicated cases like lesser trochanter broken, lateral wall broken, or very much displaced fractures, or fracture neck with fracture sharp. All those things can be tackled. So start learn the technique by doing on a simple fracture. That was what I have been telling all these years. The next part of my talk is augmentation of PFL. Knowing the biomechanics of the implant as well as the failure pattern, importance has been given to augmentation. Easy availability of CT scan and 3D reconstruction helps in the surgeon better understanding of the fracture has led to augmentation of the fixation. This article by Henrik Palm, almost every surgeon quotes. You can see an intact lateral wall during the surgery, the lateral wall is broken. A unstable fracture becomes unstable fracture during the surgery. Hence, it becomes an unstable fracture. If you treat with a DHS, uncontrolled medialization causes failure in these cases. So we all have seen such failures, either our own operated cases or operated by somebody else. Till the fracture attains a good valgus position or the further medialization cannot happen, the medialization will progress and this will many a time lead to failure. This is an immediate post of x-ray which uh, shows nice position of the implant but after one week you can see the lateral wall is broken and the medialization has already started happening. Can we predict the failure? We all know that the failure is due to medialization of the shaft. Can we predict this failure by amount of medialization? Again, this is my own way of understanding this talk. This article by Parker says that if the medialization is more than 30%, seven-fold rise in the failure. Normally, without any medialization, there is almost 10% of failure. So if there is 30% medialization, seven-fold means 70% of the patients are going to fail. This is the inference of this article. So I have designed a, a figure which is useful to all of you. Up to 30% medialization, 30% failure, 30 to 60% medialization, 60% failure, more than 90% medialization, 100% failure. This is about 25% medialization. You can see the lateral wall here, lateral wall of the pedal primate here. 25, one fourth it has medialized. So there is one in four failure. This is 50% medialization. See the lateral wall is here and the lateral wall and the medial was here. 50% it has gone medially. So one in two will fail. This is 100% medialization. The lateral wall of distal fragment is touching the medial wall of the proximal fragment. 100% medialization. So this patient is bound to fail if you don't take tackle. So can we prevent this medialization and prevent this failure? Yes, you can put a trochanteric buttress plate and prevent medialization if you are using a surface implant like a DHS or if you are using a PFN, the medialization is prevented by the proximal end. Dr. Muki from Bombay, he has started putting an ender's nail along with the DHS and he also puts a wire to get the tension of the abductor. This Dr. Muki calls as Dr. Muki's concoction technique. It's a combination of uh, DHS with the intramedial implant. DHS allows certain amount of collapse, but once uh, you achieve compression of the table, Prevent unwanted collapse by putting a fully threaded screw. This is very, very important. You don't want the collapse to happen further. So put a fully threaded screw. And add an intramedially implant. So it is a combination of intramedially implant, extramedially implant, prevent collapse, everything put together. And once he publishes this uh, article, people will have evidence. Everybody starts using this. So publishing paper is also very, very important. The osteoporotic fracture, one of my friends has used a TSP initially only. He knew that the lateral wall is break because of so much of osteoporosis. This was a case which uh, 
uh, operating during the surgery, we noted that the lateral wall is broken. Immediately, we added a TSP to prevent further collapse. Unfortunately, the TSP available in the market may not fit all, especially the elderly females, properly. So I have designed T plates and L plates, which I was using earlier for humerus as well as proximal tibia. And I use it over the DS, uh, DHS. I apply the DHS first. And over the DHS, one or two screws yes. of the DHS I remove and apply this L plate or T plate and fix through the DHS plate. This is a very short guy. See, I am only five and, uh, five and a half feet tall and this person is less than four feet tall. He had fractured neck femur where I used a pediatric DHS and I realized that I had broken the lateral wall. I applied a TS immediately on table and without further medialization, the fracture united and I have already uh, remove the implant. So this uh, uh, mm -hmm. L and T plates can be used on any of the DHS. I call it as arm admin TSP and it is very, very mm -hmm. useful. If you are doing regularly TS, uh, DHS, always mm -hmm. keep this on table. You don't know when you mm -hmm. uh, The availability of the CT scan and the return spectrum, uh, we have started understanding the we know how bad is the fracture and how bad is the wall. And these are all the part which plays in the treatment. Now we have got a new classification that is unstable or shattered lateral wall. So we should let's discuss how we can tackle this shattered lateral wall. This article by who? He says that if you do CT, if the lateral wall is less than 20.5 millimeter, so at least two centimeters should be the thickness of the lateral wall. If it is less than two centimeters, when you try to do DHS, it breaks. A stable fracture becomes unstable. I do use augmentation of the lateral wall with a single screw if the lateral wall fragment is big and the bone quality is good. So this is a lasso screw technique, which uh, myself and Gadegone have published this already. Uh, for community lateral wall, Dr. Naveen Tucker from Ahmedabad and Dr. Shashikan Ganjale from Sholapur, they have TPP. <laughs> Dr. Sushrut and Sunil, Sushrut Babulkar and Sunil Kulkani have a public trochanteric wiring technique. I have my own way uh, of tackling the lateral wall. I will talk to you because I have not published this yet. This is Dr. Naveen Tucker's uh, plate where the screw is touching the plate. The lateral wall which is communicated has been compensated by putting a plate. Similarly, Dr. Ganjale's trochanteric buttress plate, you can see the neck screws of the TFN can be passed through these two holes and whatever the communication of the lateral wall is there that is taken care of by this plate. This is one of the pictures showing the lateral wall which was broken has been supported or buttressed by this uh, plate. Another picture, it's a very thin plate so you can bend it and use it properly. Another picture showing trochanteric buttress plate of Dr. Ganjale, very, very useful. Dr. Sunil Kulkarni and Sushrut Babulkar they put a wire in the form of a figure eight and uh, collapse all of them together. They lasso or bring all the fragments together. Now, this is my way of treating lateral wall fracture. See, this was a case I operated during Pune trauma course at Sanjeti Hospital. You can see there is lateral wall is broken. I used, what I did was, I used a nail and the screw head, I passed it through the fracture side so that they are touching the nail. There was a medial lesser trochanter was also broken, so I got little extra valgus. This is immediate post op x ray. Just at four weeks, you can see already the everything has healed around the nail. Getting a good valgus and getting the support to the screw. If the screw is loose, it can rock in and out. Always the screw head should have either the support of the lateral wall or at least a plate or at least the nail. I propose that a nail can be used as a lateral wall. This is what I call it as Shiva's technique of tackling deficit lateral wall. So it, here the lateral wall is deficit just by putting the screw deep into the, at the fracture side against the nail, you can tackle. Another case I have treated in 2014, badly communicated fracture. You can see the screw heads are touching the nail. I have put it through the fracture side and I have already removed the implant, the fracture has consolidated. So this is what I call it as my technique of uh, substituting any implant for the lateral wall. 
a elderly patient you can see the age of the patient 85 years old man i did again lateral wall was very very thin you can see that the lateral wall is less than 20 millimeter or less than 2 centimeter it's bound to break so that's why i have put the head of the screw against the nail and see the patient walking this immediate post of once and good fixation patient will be walking comfortably so that is not at all a problem this is a 10 weeks you can see the fracture has united already and the patient is so happy uh, the patient is so happy see he is squatting sitting cross legged and this is all the implant if i had to put a, a ganjales plate or navin stucker plate i had to open up like a dhs and put the plate so without opening having the biology at my side i have just put the nail screw head touching the nail and i have tackled all this i have got many cases to show see such a happy patient he actually cried in front of me saying that you would have probably you were not expecting to live at the age of 85 years and uh, with this hip fracture but uh, by doing proper surgery we can treat all this elderly patient also with intramedial implant and uh, you need not have to go for a very major heroic surgery like a hip replacement another patient again badly comminuted lateral wall in a 60 or 70 year old lady again the same technique i have used the screw head that touching inside the nail and this is after four and a half years when the patient came to me in 2019 you can see that the fracture has consolidated if i had let the screw head out thinking that i have to remove it in due course of time then this will rock in and out that will cause the failure especially in osteoporotic bones that's why getting support to the screw head is also very very useful that is the reason why i said initially i like indian implants more than the imported synthesis one because the in original synthesis is not having a head to the those screws but our own indian atmanirbhar pfn have got heads so probably our indian made implant the pfn is far far better than what is available in the western world even better than the original synthesis implant friends there are so many nails, PFN, PFNA, PFNA2, ZNN, Trigen nail, Halifax nail. Which one is the gold standard? Is the next part I'm going to talk. Friends, we all had SP nail, Juet nail, angle blade plate, sliding hip screw, everything. So many were available. And we all know now that DHS is the gold standard amongst all the extramedial implant. Similarly, do we have any gold standard in intramedial implant yes we have so many newer nails coming in the market normally what happens is anything new comes in the market we think it is better than the earlier one maruti came in 80s then the esteem came in the 90s we knew that esteem was far better than maruti 800 then came the balino we now know that balino is far better than the esteem but unfortunately the same cannot be applied in market where commerce is more involved so we have so many nails gamma nail pfn pfna2 trigen znn halifax so many nails are available is there any gold standard that is the next part of my talk which i'm going to answer friends implant of choice for a uh, intermediate nail in my view all newer implant common belief that anything newer is better but as of today, I feel PFN is the best rather than gold standard among all the intramedial implant. I will substantiate my this statement why I like this. We all know that gamma nail came with a single screw and it had a problem. That's why the PFN came into the market. The thickness of the gamma screw and the thickness of the cervical screw of PFN, when it is compared, there are so many drawbacks of the gamma screws and the proximal end from 18 was reduced to 15 in PFN. The cervical screw, which was 12.5, was brought to 8 in uh, uh, PFN. Gradually tapering of the distal fragment so that while insertion stress fracture will not happen. Dynamic locking bolt in PFN is available. The interlocking is far away so that very implant fracture will not happen. So all these were incorporated in the PFN. But I will see when it screw is passed a gamma screw is passed almost 40 percent of the bone is removed 
whereas two screws of PFN is passed, only about 25% of the bone is removed. Means you are removing less bone by putting two screws. So you have more bone for uniting. That's one. This article talks about, this article from Greece talks about just two out of 45 cutouts in PFN, whereas they had 10 cutouts in 90 cases, almost uh, four times the PFN. Uh, so they said that putting a anti-rotation pin definitely prevents cutout rate. Our own Indian article, uh, Dr. Amit Rastogi from uh, Banaras Hindu University has published this in the uh, uh, Indian Journal of Orthopedics, where he did study. He inserted, a, he made a medial one centimeter gap in the bone and he inserted PFN as well as gamma nail. And they were cyclically loaded. And you can see that one out of nine PFN failed. That is only one in nine failed. Whereas five out of nine gamma nail failed even before reaching uh, 50,000 cycles. Here this one failed at, while it reached, it was reaching 50,000, but majority of the gamma nail failed just between 20 to 25,000 cycles only. So two is better than one. There is no doubt about it. When two is better than one, why single screw system like PFN A2 and uh, ZNNR become popular? That's my, everybody will ask that question. The reason is, as surgeon, we find it difficult to accommodate two screws. Without knowing the technique of properly passing the nail, we shovel the nail through the fracture site and there is virus happening. The cervical screw goes into the head, but the derotation screw cannot go to the head because of the improper surgery as a surgeon. And also, some of the companies blatantly blame the, DH, uh, the PFN for Z effect. They say that Z effect will not happen with a single screw implant. So Z effect happens only. This is inherent property of a two screw system. So don't do it. So that's why single screw systems are becoming more popular because the companies market vehemently the last part which no one talks probably apart from me patent issues i will take this at the end before i close my talk so the this is actually the commerce and the patent is the one which prevents them why i don't like pfna we all know that a helical blade makes a track and it rotates and goes inside for that rotation you have to unlock the helical blade and before you can hammer it inside. But you can see that the helical blade has got dislodged from the nail. Here it has gone out. This is Dr. Tanna slide. You can see that the helical blade has penetrated. Many a time the sliding mechanism of this helical, any single screw implant is so bad that jamming of the sliding mechanism happens. That's why penetration into the joint is more. This article by Takigami says that keep the tip of the helical blade 10, 10 millimeter away from the subcondral bone, from the joint. Friends, we all know that the screw has the best purchase in the subcondral bone. As subcondral it is, better the purchase. But this article says that keep the tip at least 10, centim 10 millimeter away. Means you are not passing the screw totally into the head and neck itself, just to prevent the penetration. So this is what uh, I cannot understand. If the screw head is not nearer to that, if the is more, how we can do this? We all have seen this PFN going inside or coming out. If there is one more screw, either that would have come out or gone inside. This is nothing but the Z effect. One is going inside is Z and one coming out is Z. So, just because the PFN is not there, we think that the PFN A2 is better. Not at all. Again, PFNA has a lot of lateral wall problems. That's why they increased the curvature and they came out with PFNA to in our time after this one. Uh, then, as I said, you had to unlock the PFN medical bed and hammer it. Then, after you finish the surgery, after you finish the surgery, you have to collapse this helical blade. See, look at the white mark here. When I try to collapse, you can see that the helical blade lost purchase and it came back because this fracture was in a young adult. It was a 40, 45 year old lady. This did not require any collapse. So this seven millimeter collapse, whether the fracture requires or not, I have to collapse and lose the purchase. So 
whatever this company says that the helical blade will have better performance in osteoporotic bone, it has to be really confirmed. It's all, uh, it's very difficult to understand. Here you can see the surgeon was unable to collapse the helical blade. So this in due course of time that broke. Another case, the helical blade and the barrel got separated and the fracture subsequently went into virus. So friends, there are a lot of problems with the helical blade with a collapsible mechanism. Why the hell do you require a collapsible mechanism in a subtrochanteric fracture? You cannot hammer the helical blade without opening it. If you hammer without opening the helical blade, it will remove a lot of bone and it will spoil the bone inside. So you have to unlock the helical blade, make it mobile and hammer it so that it rotates and goes inside. But why the hell do you require this collapsing mechanism? So this is what I cannot understand why this is required. The latest helical blade by the same company, it is not having the collapsible mechanism. While you are hammering, it rotates inside and goes. So it itself shows that this mechanism was wrong from day one. They have fooled all of us. They said that it works better in osteoporotic bone and they have fooled all of us and they have gained the market. So this is what I don't like. So the people who have come out with this helical blade, they came with a PFN, immediately they came with a PFN A2 because PFN A was bad. Then they came with the helical blade which has been already changed into, uh, now already this uh, helical blade, helical part also has been changed to like a gamma screws. That itself shows that this system is really not correct. Why I don't like ZNN? I don't like single screw system. The reason is, uh, it like any gamma nail or anything, if there is no head, that's why it can penetrate inside or it can walk out. I don't like single screw system. See, this is a basic cervical fracture. The left side and right side, I just transposed the same picture to show you. Uh, when you're operating in the right side, see the displacement. When you finally tighten the screw, you're tightening the screw in the clockwise direction, this fracture closes. Whereas if you're operating on the left side, when you do the final tightening of the screw, the fracture opens up. Many a time, we lose the fracture reduction by the time the subcondral placement of the screw will happen. That is the reason I, uh, why I don't like any single screw without a derotational pin. Probably by putting a derotational pin, that can be prevented. See, this is an example. Uh, ZN1 was being done. You can see the reduction here fairly okay. But at the end, you can see so much of displacement has happened when final tightening was done. Whole reduction has been lost by the surgeon. Another case, nicely reduced fracture. At the end, you can see so much of displacement. This is only due to this fracture was on the left side. There is no derotational pin which could have prevented this. So that is the reason why, why I don't like. Coming to Trigen, I have done Trigen nail. I have used and I have done the demonstration in a few conferences also by this company. Why I don't like Trigen nail? You have to keep the compression at 0, 10 or 15 millimeter. There is a slot here where you keep the second screw and when the second screw rotates, compression will happen. So either you can compress 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter or 20 millimeter. So who are these people to dictate that I require 20 millimeter of compression? So if the fracture requires 17 millimeter of compression, it's not possible. If the fracture requires 11 millimeter of compression, it is not possible. You have to keep it at either 10 or at 20 millimeter. There is nothing in between. 0, 10, or 20. 0, I can understand that for a subtrochanteric refractor, you don't require any compression happen. You can keep it at 0. But why 10 and 20? Why not 12 and 16? Why not 7 and 15? So these are the things. The company deciding how much I should collapse. This I don't like because all fractures don't require uniform 10 millimeter compression like Z, uh, Trigen nail or uh, the PF and A2, which says seven millimeter collapse. So these differences have to be ironed out properly and proper. Whatever the fracture begs, you have to collapse that much. I have done study. I was involved with the study of Halifax nail of Dr. Halder recently. They have increased the surface area by putting a triflanged wire. But again, this is a headless screw. Whenever you are using a headless screw, 
there is no counter support on the lateral wall. I'll just give an example. This was a ZNN type of screw I was using. The headless screw has gone inside the lateral wall, you can see. Once it goes inside the lateral wall, collapse mechanism cannot happen. The, large, the screw has to be slightly out of the lateral wall. Then only it can slide out during the collapse of the fracture. If it is already penetrated within the lateral wall, when the collapse happens, the hole in the lateral wall will not match and there will be a problem for the sliding mechanism to happen if you have not achieved the compression fully. That is the reason why I don't like headless screws. Headless screws can penetrate into the through the lateral wall. This is an example. This is a ZNN type of screw I was using. You can see there is a opening of the medial uh, part. So what I did was I tried to compact this fracture. There is a turnbuckle. You can push the sleeve and collapse the fracture. That will pull the screw and that is the mechanism with which you can uh, use that. That is after passing the screw. So this gap becomes less. I have passed the ZNN screw and I have pulled the uh, by pushing the sleeve, I have compared the fracture. You can see that the fracture gap has reduced. Then I have put the set screw to prevent further collapse happening. Then after putting the set screw, I have removed the screwdriver. You can see that it's almost about 10 millimeter outside it is. Because if I keep it very much less, it can go inside and it will cause problem. So I normally keep out 5 to 6 millimeter outside. This is immediately just before uh, putting the top screw you can see that you can see that already this is already 10 millimeter outside here it has gone inside you can see that it is only 5 millimeter outside so this collapse whatever i have achieved will not be retained unless there is a head if there is a head this lateral wall cannot come out so whatever compression this mechanism this company people tell this is all only it works only in bone model, not in real situation. So head is very, very important at the lateral wall is very, very important. That's the reason why you can see this is a 2006 X-ray I'm showing. So head of the screw abuts against the lateral wall and you can achieve the compression beautifully. Whatever the compression you require, you can achieve. None of these screws, Gamma nail, TFNA2, Trigen nail, ZNN, Halifax nail, none of them have got the head. That is the reason why I hate all of them. So I can do, I can get good result with them. I know the problem with them. That's why I can get the good result with them. But as such, I cannot achieve good compression what I require. Why I like PFN? It's a two screw system. Compression as required can be given. Further collapse if it required can happen as the screw can slide. Head of the next screw can compensate for the deficit. This is how I compensate. I normally come and I already that maximum strength and still my satisfaction. I get feedback for how much I have to do the compression. I keep on compressing till I am satisfied. It can be 5 millimeter, it can be 6 millimeter, it can be 7 millimeter, it can be 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, whatever the is. Till the time I am happy. I keep on compressing this fracture. That is the reason why I like PFN. See, this is an old picture. 2007, I have operated this 75 year old lady. 2007, you can see. Uh, I have got good valgus positive reduction. Head of these screws are touching the lateral wall. Whatever the fracture required compression, I achieved on table. After 14 months in 2008, you can see the screws have not backed down. So, this is very, very important to achieve good compression on table don't depend upon the sliding mechanism to help you no always try to compress on table as much as possible this is an immediate post x-ray i operated in 2015 the lateral wall the screw heads are touching the lateral wall or the nail here you can see after three months it is remaining there only none of this headless screw i can use in this position that is the reason why i don't like as i said earlier if there is a lateral wall deficit, either I have to use a Navin Tucker stochantic buttress plate or Ganjale stochantic buttress plate or Dr. Sushrut Babulkar and Sunil Kulkarni's wiring technique. But I have already shown lateral wall communicated, lateral wall communicated, lateral wall missing. I got good result. 
just by putting the screw against the nail, the nail itself has got all. This I cannot do with any of these implants, whatever the newer implants are available in the market, I cannot do any one of them. So the reasons are so many. The reasons are uh, why there are so many nails in the market is so many. The hip implant trends, the hip implant market is very, very enormous. It's a uh, floors and floors of fractures are being treated every year by so many orthopedic surgeons. Surgeons prefer to use intramedullary implant despite there is just moderate evidence to use. So you and me try to use intramedullary implant because we like doing it. So every company has to have a share and they want, they're coming out with newer implant and they're blaming PFN is not good because PFN is plated, including the derotation screw. Why there are no other company having derotation screw? Because PFN and derotation screw both are patented. That is the reason. PFN synthesis came with PFN in 1997 in the market. But this Smith and Nephew filed a court case in September 2006. Friends, see this time. September 2006. The Smith and Nephew filed a court case against Synthes in US court just within one month, 27th of October 2006, which is very, very difficult to imagine in Indian courts. Within a one month, the US court gave order for Synthes company to withdraw PFN, TFN, derotation screw in the market and not to sell them. The whole uh, verdict is available on the net. You can search and get them. That is the reason why 2006 Synthes stopped selling this PFN in the market. So what they did, they came out with helical blade in 2007 because they wanted to have the market share. Then PFN A had some problem. They came in 2011 with PFN A2. Then PFN A2 also has problem. So they have come out with TFN advanced. You can see that if the helical blade has got good purchase in the osteoporotic bone, why the hell you require holes to pass the cement in this? Are you with me? Are you understanding this, uh, whatever the way they are projecting? They came out with helical blade saying that this gives the best purchase, even better than a screw or a lag screw. And now they are saying that this is not sufficient. You have to put cement also. And they have already come back with the lag screw. TFN Advanced is already available with the lag screw because Gamma screw, the patent period got over in 2009 or 2010. I'm not sure exactly. So everybody is coming back with a lag screw type of screw nowadays. The helical blade will gradually go out of the market. So this is the reason the patent of TFN and PFN, TFN and the derotation screw he is now with the Stephen view with the cause for other companies to come out with ZNN, TFNA2, Helical Blade, Trigen Nail, etc. Friends, we all know that the Smith and Nephew is having the patent for the PFN. Then why the hell they are not selling PFN? This question really you can come to your mind. The reason is they are doing great with their gamma nail. I sold 1 million gamma nail way back in. Uh, sometime in uh, 2001 or 2002, this is Dr. Haldar who received a golden gamma nail when the company sold 1 million gamma nail worldwide. Also, Smith & Nephew is not only having gamma nail, they also have trigen nail. This trigen nail is nothing but the two screw system of the Smith & Nephew. When they have already used intramedullary implant in the market, why they are required to compete with their own both of them are doing good. Why they have to require to compete by bringing again TFN in back to the market? That is the reason why we don't get TFN except in India because there is no rule come uh, which prevents me to copy all this implant in India. But in Western world, America, Europe, nobody can sell anything similar, even derotation screw, anybody, nobody can sell because it's patented by Smith & Nephew. This Smith & Nephew patent will go up in 2026. I am sure in 2026, all companies will come out with <laughs> PFN.
the two screw system i want you to use your judgment of selecting interpreting impact i already talked about dhs how to augment it pfn whether pfn is better than pfn a2 or trigen nail all those things are already discussed friends it is not the implant but it is the surgeon you and me who are important and the reduction we get on the table is behind the success of all these implants if you know how to drive maruti car you can drive tata sumo or you can drive a benz car or you can drive volvo car similarly the technique of driving is has to be learned by you if you don't know how to drive it whether you use mercedes car or if you use volvo car you are bound to create accident so try to get the reduction try to get the driving skills right that is what i want to tell you if dhs is considered the gold standard for surface implant today in the market for surface implant then definitely intermedial implant with efn having two screw system like this and the next screw having the head i am intentionally repeating this the next screw having head can be considered as a gold standard so thank you very much now i am open for any questions if you have uh, sir uh, i know i have over shot yes, the time cuz i got the permission from dr jinsiwale yesterday to uh, continue the talk uh, thank you dr anand jinsiwale for that uh, extra time you gave because i wanted to convey the message properly cuz in 30 minutes it's difficult to convey all the message uh, uh, with so many implants i was comparing yes dr jinsiwale thanks for the master delivered is one no i am unable to hear you properly there is network issue probably uh, dr atul uh, uh, can you find out the problem with dr jinsi wale because i cannot hear what he is talking Yeah, yeah. Actually, sir, his voice is not clear. Yeah. Okay. Then it's fine. Yeah, it's sorry. a problem here with everybody. Then fine. Yeah. Uh, now. Yeah. Now you are fine, sir. You can switch off your video so that uh, we'll get the bad bit for uh, your talking. Yeah. You can close your video uh, temporarily. Yeah. And then speak. So I have closed the video now. Yeah, can, now can you listen me properly? Yeah, now we yeah, can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to listen the masters rather than I speak on the subject, which is not necessary after listening your subject. Because no, no, no. Sir, to, I am interested to listen to you because I don't do much of uh, replacements. What you have done, what you have done today, that means there is hardly any non-union or mal-union we can see now in the world. the technique you have opted and you have improvised your own way of doing it and you are giving in a indian scenario with a less cost this is the most important thing which i could learn from you today that minimum cost because all these pfn a2 and implant from outside they are heavily costing us yeah. and the people we can't afford all the time there are people 10% can afford but 90% people can't afford that the unfortunately the people there are many people who think that imported is always better and we only downgrade our own uh, thing uh, luckily the glad that uh, uh, atmanirbhar word has come now and people will start using it my usage of uh, imported implant is only for some special purpose whenever i go out people do ask some company people sponsor that activity i use it but my own prior absolutely sir absolutely sir agreed with you sir Yeah. That, that is that is the reason why we are here as a merrill sir we give the imported quality of implants and the instruments sir yes 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 sir ajo that's correct so I, i think i think sir uh, that there, there is one raised hand over here yeah uh, i think it's dr ahmed he has some questions yes dr ahmed hello, hello. yeah yeah dr ahmed you can ask question to dr shiva yeah Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Doctor Ahmed, ask, and then I'll I'll ask the question. Let Doctor Ahmed. I, I think like there is some network disturbance. He cannot hear us. Yes. 
Yes, uh, you can you can uh, type the questions. No, no. I yes, those sir. who are listening, you can type the questions. I can uh, take the question one after another. No problem. Prakash uh, yes, Kothwal has written that masterly talk by Dr. Shivchandra. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Rajendra Chanda has re written really very good oration. Make choice of plant uh, very clear. Yes, fine. That was the reason why I requested to call it to. Can I ask question, sir? Can technical yes. question it is? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Is it necessary to follow the international standards of TAD, TAD of 25 yeah. millimeter one? Yes. And with the reduction, which is more important. Yes. In especially in unstable fractures, rather yeah. than the implant. In yes. some of your cases, I have seen that when both the screws are not reaching subcondyle, still the results are excellent. Yeah, that the valgus and uh, getting the reduction right is more important because uh, uh, one is I keep the uh, intramedullary implant the next screw very inferiorly. If you really measure the pad from the fovea centrale, it will be more than 25 millimeter. I measure the pad from the nearest subcondyle bone. If the inferior part of the head, my screw is there. Where the subcondyle bone is measure the distance, part from the fovea centrale is uh, away. I call this as calcar TAD. It is okay. calcar TAD is very very important, and uh, that is one of the reason I good result with this. And good. that's why that's why after listening your lecture a number of times, I have started putting my nails screws just below the center of the head and yes. more posterior, and the results are excellent. My yes. next question is in posterior, yeah. in posterior void, do do something else, not in the lateral voids. The posterior lateral voids or posterior medial voids. Uh, see, uh, anterior void is anterior part of the bone is a strong bone. It cracks. Patient normally externally rotates the leg, and the posterior part is crushing part. You cannot do anything. The posterior part is all crushed pieces. You cannot align it. Get the alignment right. Always align the anterior cortex, and you take it that posterior part is aligned properly. It's like putting the first button of your shirt properly. It's the anterior cortex. If anterior cortex is properly reduced, the last button also will come aligned properly. That's what I do. I don't do anything okay. for combination in the okay. posterior wall. Yeah. And what are your indications of a long PFN instead of a short PFN when you change your implant length? Yeah. Whenever I am using an implant for fractures about one inch below the lesser trochanter. And if my interlocking is not getting at least five centimeters of distance from the fracture site, then only I use a long implant. Otherwise, for high subtrochanter fracture or even fractures at the lesser trochanter, just below the lesser trochanter, I am comfortable to use short PFN, and I am not repeating. Yeah. Hello, Shiva sir. We have some questions in the chat box. Yeah, I'll take them. Yes. Uh, Can you elaborate exactly the difference between PFN A, PFN A two, and common in uh, Dr. Modi Jain? PFN A is slightly straighter, then PFN A two is slightly curved. They increase the curvature, so the entry from the tip of the trochanter they slightly took it to lateral aspect because they gave a slightly curvature. The reason was the PFN wave was touching the lateral cortex from inside. The never person used to push the neck screw and hammer it. That lateral wall used to fracture. So to prevent that, they made the uh, nail slightly curved so that it doesn't touch the lateral wall. That's the main difference in PFN and PFN A2. With the gamma nail, it's uh, entirely different. Gamma nail is a intramedullary implant. Uh, the screw is a lag screw system. PFN A is a helical screw system. So that's the main important. Then the Rajendra Chandra is from Nag uh, Nagpur asked. Do you drill with triple reamer? I have abandoned that. If you put it on the screw, yes. Uh, you don't require to use the triple reamer. The barrel requires only double reamer. The next screw part requires eight millimeter reamer, and the barrel requires fourteen millimeter reamer. The in fourteen to twenty five millimeter triple part of the triple reamer is not required. You can see this in my keyhole DHS video. I have designed a double reamer, and I use this whenever I am using a. Uh, DHS. Then Dr. Digambar Pipra wants to know uh, 
thanks again for wonderful presentation sir kindly give me your whatsapp number okay uh, you can write down my whatsapp number 9822402204 so anyway uh, write my whatsapp number in the chat box for any everybody to save 9822402204 only request is uh, you send the whatsapp message i whenever i am free i will uh, reply but don't keep on calling me because just send the picture and sir sir i am in the ot i have sent a picture because i get too much irritated because uh, too many people do that and i stop doing this nowadays so we have here chandak sir also he has some questions yes chandak rajendra uh, you, are sir, you are on mute sir uh, you are on mute yes yeah, sir yeah. in a in a pfn when you put two screws uh, what is the drill you use for the lower screw and the um, upper screw or the compression screw and the derotation screw that is a very good question so what i do is the superior screw is 6.5 mm derotation screw we have a step cut drill the proximal part of the step cut drill is 4.5 mm and the back end is 6.4 mm so i use that step cut drill for superior screw and okay. do, and there are slot in that if you have seen this uh, will have slot yeah. whenever you are rotating it takes out the bone and it comes out through the slot instead of forward rotation i keep reverse yeah, yeah anti clockwise rotation so the bone will remain inside in the bone itself it start compacting from the side especially in osteoporotic bone instead of forward rotation you go on doing backward rotation you might have to drill little more extra time because the bone is not being removed but it compacts on the side that's fun second thing is i use the same superior drill bit for even the inferior one first yes. i try to use only the superior drill bit for the inferior one and just the lateral wall uh, till about the nail size i use the proper 8 mm step cut drill i don't use the full one because yeah. i don't want to remove too much of bone the screw itself gives good purchase and it compacts very well agreed agreed, agreed. Yeah. thank you thank you so much yes dr panchadadi kar vijay ji you are talking about yes yeah. uh, for uh, pfn when we are compressing the fracture do we compress alternate head screw or only inferior screw Uh, i use alternatively because uh, i initially put the cervical screw uh, when the fracture is uh, the, uh, i release the traction to some extent see i give the traction reduce the tra fracture once i pass the guide wire and once i pass the nail i slightly release the traction i don't go totally release it then pass the superior screw then i pass the inferior screw then totally the foot end of the fracture is released then i alternately compress both of them you only compress the inferior one superior screw will slightly come out if the head of the screw is not touching the lateral wall it can toggle in and out that is the reason why i want to compress again the superior screw the head of the screw should be touching the lateral wall if the lateral wall is missing by chance i have too much tightened and the lateral wall osteoporotic bone i use 5 mm shorter screw and push it inside so that it touches the nail so yes. i normally don't use a washer for them because the washer using again the patient will not be able to sleep on that side so many problems so i normally push it inside against the nail and i have not found any problem removal time i have to use a, a small uh, owl or something make a hole then i have to take it out that's the only problem i have faced yeah thank you thank you sir okay sir uh, thank you shiva sir uh i would like to continue with the dr kapadia now with this topic hello yes dr kapadia sir you are on mute sir please unmute yourself hello yes sir we can hear you yeah yeah okay uh Dr. Shiva Shankar, I must compliment you. You have really dissected your topic completely and in absolute detail, and I have really enjoyed sitting and listening to you in the last one hour, beautifully and very nicely dissected the whole topic completely to understand the method of fixation and how it is to be. Thank you very much, sir. It's an extremely educative Sunday. Thank you very much. 
very beautifully done very nice i am also predominantly a pfn a intermediary person i do not do regularly dhs now for quite some time simply because it's more faster and quicker and minimally invasive i'll be very honest in that because it, doing a pdf pf dhs lifting the whole thing is not required i have tried to do your method of minimally invasive uh, dhs but somehow i've never succeeded maybe sometime i'll drop in sit down with you and learn first hand with you okay now my uh, topic is basically something little bit different for a uh, trans apna for a non union of a fracture neck femur where you would like to preserve the femoral head in today's day and age of easiness and very very simple quick availability of joint replacement where the moment your implant fails the first thought that everybody has is that chalo let us do a thr or let us do a bipolar the important thing is that we would like to preserve the femoral head as much as we can and don't be in a hurry to take off the femoral head and be in a hurry to do a thr because uh, i mean some of you maybe the older people who are on this uh, panel would have read watson jones 1 and 2 textbook which we used to follow right in the beginning now there are a lot of other books to read and in that chapter on the fracture neck femur a very well worded statement in that book was i still remember after so many years that the best replacement for the femoral head is in the acetabulum and try to hold on to it as much as you can this is what is written in that book more than 50 uh, 45 50 years ago and i find that even relevant even today even though it is so easy to do a joint replacement but then doing a joint replacement in a younger person with its own set of problems after so many years there's no harm in trying to do a pavel dostoyevsky where you will be able to treat your non union and get a good result with a long term good result and maybe at one point of time you can definitely go ahead and revise that person into a total hip replacement uh we will uh, start the okay i'm going to go forward now my this uh, pictures are from the merrill institute these are from the merrill institute which is there in wapi and uh, that got extremely pleasant memories and merrill i mean is the associate for many many years with them now the pavel osteotomy basically i'm sure all of you are very familiar with this it is not something very different that i'm going to say but uh, pavel's the basic issue is that when you have compression at a fracture it will generate osteogenesis when you have tension at a fracture it will it will cause fibrogenesis and when you have shear at a fracture it will cause cartilage formation or chondrogenesis so the principle of union is to get fracture compression and that will happen in a neck femur when we have that the osteotum when the neck when the level of the fracture is at 90 degrees to the weight of the body in the this thing and it will allow the fracture to heal quickly and fast pavel right in the beginning he used to do a lateral based osteotomy and that was controlled in a plaster and i remember doing this when i was a resident in jj but then now of course we've gone much more forward this many many years ago and muller modified it by stabilizing the osteotomy with a double edged plate the pavel the pavel osteotomy basically is an intertrochanteric osteotomy which optimizes the condition for fracture healing by as i said it converts the shear forces into compression and allows the fracture to heal completely fast it corrects the symptoms of coxa vara and also the limb length discrepancy and the osteosynthesis was normally described by using a blade plate system which i have used in the past but then i find doing a dhs assembly also works in the same way and it is much more user friendly especially when it comes to the fixation of the once you have done your osteotomy and align the osteotomy very well it becomes easier to do it that way the osteotomy basically is an intertrochanteric osteotomy calculated wedge is around the whole aim is to have a around 20 to 25 degrees is the power angle which you like to reproduce after the osteotomy is done and that is calculated with the preoperative x-rays before which will tell us what is the power angle in the preop area before the surgery is done which will tell you then and then you will decide and accordingly you will come to the decision to the osteotomy wedge i will remove and get my final osteotomy correction 25 to 30 degrees 
this is the uh, paper okay, sir, sorry to interrupt you yeah uh, i would request everyone to please mute yourself because like there is a disturbance in you need to come here sir yeah thank you everyone thank you yes sir okay, please continue yeah. all right so now the valgus osteotomy was uh, was described basically using a blade plate system but then uh, this paper describes it using a simple uh, dynamic screw and plate and it works equally well and i've used it a lot of times and it is extremely user friendly now what do you do in the pre operative planning before we decide the osteotomy you'll have an x ray pelvis ap view with both lower limbs and in 15 degrees of internal rotation which will show us the pelvis and the femur in the correct angulation you will see the pavel's angle find out how much it is and accordingly you will decide the osteotomy which is required in the pre operative planning session as you can see the initial pavel's angle over here is around 60 degrees so you want a wedge around 30 to 35 degrees to be removed which after correction will give our will give our pavel's angle around 25 to 30 degrees which is our basic correction is there that is accordingly this is how to be calculated and this has to be done on the pre operative planning the inclination of the fracture line to the horizontal is a shear angle which as has been calculated around 20 to 25 degrees so we plan a wedge according to the requirement now how do you decide how much centimeters are to be removed this is basically a very simple circle geometry 360 divided by 360 degrees equal to 2 pi r and it is around 10 mm for 10 degrees or roughly per degree it is 1 mm on the lateral cortex which is yeah. your level of your correct so once you decide how much is the degrees you are required that calculation that many millimeters are to be dissected and your osteotomy will be done this is a paper planning that is required this is a non union over there of the of the femur as you can see and uh, the horizontal arm which you require here is about 45 degrees is the pavel's angle in this figure so we are aiming at around 20 to 25 so our osteotomy correction should be 20 degrees 20 degrees is equivalent to 20 mm as measured from the intertrochanteric area more or less on the base of the greater trochanter that is your perpendicular cut and then below that will be around 50, 20 20 mm you will do your osteotomy and then you will correct it here of course it is shown with a blade plate system but we are going to do it with a dhs because the dhs i feel in the last so many years is much more forgiving and it allows you to compensate for a little difference if your osteotomy or your millimeters are different and you are able to correct it at a more corrective and is more easier to handle the osteotomy what are the potential pitfalls in doing this osteotomy you can do valgus which can be excess more than 30 degrees it will compromise the blood supply it will increase the risk of uh, avascular necrosis and then if this person were to need a total hip replacement is going to be extremely difficult to get your proper implants into place if your bone is very osteoporotic or you have a short femoral head segment and again the blade plate or your femoral uh, or your dhs screw will not hold the head enough to allow you to rotate it and you correct your osteotomy at the time of fixation so in that situation then maybe you may not be able to do this or you'll have to find some other method of fixation and now there are lots of other methods of fixation available which can give you the same result with the same method of treatment your blade if it is too long it will cause distraction if it is too short it will not hold the head fragment the position on the blade as just very well very well elucid very well clarified by uh, dr jinsi wale also and dr shiva shankar that your fixation should be in the inferior and the posterior portion of the femoral head and neck you should avoid the central blade even in this system when you are going to do an osteotomy your blade the position of your blade or the position of your uh, dhs screw should be slightly inferior and posterior so the it is really require a lot of bone for it to break through it has to cut through if it is in the superior portion or anterior portion it can easily cut through but if you are inferiorly or posteriorly it will hold extremely well and will allow your osteotomy to unite uneventfully without the implant cutting out through the femoral head now let's see this is a 15 year old boy who had a history of fall primary fixation was done with a trochanteric plate as you can see the fixation has been done 
and uh, it was a very difficult fixation to do this is a uh, synthes uh, trochanteric plate which has come out many many years ago the fixation was done now what has happened is as you can see the fracture is not healing and in time the superior screw broke and the fracture is now going into varus so obviously there is a young boy the epiphyses are still all of them not completely fused so naturally the surgery that means that had to be done it couldn't be left alone so i uh, took up the patient and we did a powell's uh, abduction osteotomy as you can see the uh, the neck of the varus of the fracture has been corrected the neck uh, angle has been restored the trochanter has come down nicely and the osteotomy and the neck is sitting well on the shaft this is in december 2014 and this is in february there's a little loss in the there's a little bit of varus which has occurred but overall the fracture has healed extremely well and the patient has been walking quite nicely and as you can see this is in may where the fracture has healed completely and uh, the patient is pain free has got a good range of movement and uh, this uh, now this patient as you can see the fracture is this thing i tell this is the same boy his uh, video he was very kind enough to send me last night this is nearly 7 years now he is doing all his activities very very well he sits down for his prayers everything totally if you want i will run through it once more he is walking very well there is no limb length discrepancy i have seen him some time ago he is sitting down and this is how we sit down for our prayers he is squatting in the this thing all his hip movements are absolutely fine and we have managed to save the head give him his length and correct the hip completely this is another patient which i would like to show you a 48 year old male who have operated quite recently i mean i am quite in favor of this osteotomy and i do it quite often and i am not very keen to rush into doing a replacement very very fast this is another patient which i have uh, operated now this patient had come to me in february and this surgery was done about 3 months ago there is uh, as you can see there is a fair absorption of the femoral uh, neck the fracture has collapsed into varus and the screws are backing out he was very very painful he was unable to walk uh this is again after one month and then finally we decided i mean he was advised for a total uh, to, for a total hip replacement but i told him that we will avoid doing that and we'll try to save your head and uh, this is what uh, i have done and this is the x rays which are cm position on the table when the osteotomy was done as you can see we have got the trochanter down the valgus has been given the fracture has been aligned there is a derotation screw on top and uh, this is in march 2020 as you can see this is 4 uh, months later extremely good patient is walking unfortunately i don't have a video which i could have shared with you the patient is not from bombay and the fracture has healed completely well i would like to share a video of this is a very i have don't have a very large presentation is a very small presentation that i have and this is what is there as you can see this is a uh, on the table when the patient was uh, put on the fracture table little bit of traction was given and the screws is in the lateral view on the table the screws uh, were removed oh, the fracture site is exposed and now you have to decide i have to decide which uh, position i have to put in my dhs screw i took out the oblique screw and then i have left that one screw so that allow my dhs to pass i put the dhs in the this is lightly in the center i would have liked to have a posterior one parallel to that screw this is a triple reamer which i have used and then i have taken out that screw and i have put the dhs screw inside yes forward it about 10 mm below the this thing we've done the osteotomy as you can see at the intertrochanteric level and then i've tightened the uh, aligned uh, hip 
an important year is to tighten the screw distal to proximal as you tighten the screw when you tighten you tighten the screw the femoral shaft will be pulled to the plate and the osteotomy will close very very well and then you will put a derotation screw on top try to put it parallel so it will hold it very well I, it was very difficult one i had to try very hard for this but finally i managed to succeed and it had come out as you can see it has, was not very easy the femoral head fragment was very very small and then finally i was able to, i managed to put in a screw which was nearly parallel and i think i accepted it and the patient was mobilized and he is walking and is doing extremely well this is how it has come here the important uh, part is that when you close your osteotomy as you can see the osteotomy is closed properly uh this is a very short presentation that i have done because of the 25 minutes that i had if there are any questions i would more welcome them thank you sir thank you very much it was a lovely presentations and like we we understood it that preventing the head is so much important and uh, i would like uh, i would like shiva shankar sir to add on this or any other who has any query about this please please come forward and share to us yeah can i ask a question or little uh, explanation uh, to uh, dr shakir dr shakir yeah. uh, excellent presentation and i really believe that you should preserve the head in a younger patient and in young adults but have you tried any time the fibula graft along with the screws uh, in the beginning when i used to operate i am talking nearly 10 15 years ago i used to use fibula grafts but then with fibula graft what has happened the time for surgery increases and uh, i have realized that this is a quicker procedure it doesn't compromise your hip biomechanics a lot and your patient mobilizes much faster and some of these patients i have revised into a totally hip replacement i found to be very comfortable while doing it so they're not really this thing because a fibula graft i have done a, quite a lot of patients in the past but i have the time consume is more the technique is much more perfect and your alignment and i find that doing with the dhs is much more simpler for me great thank you yeah dr kapadia that was an excellent uh, presentation uh, do you have you done this valgus osteotomy with a double angle blade plate or double angle dhs yeah, yes i have done it in the past i was not able to find those pictures I, honestly i was trying to find though i couldn't okay. find them but i have done it in the past but then i find that doing with this one is much more easier yeah it is much more easier but the patient will have valgus thrust at the knee and that will cause a knee pain subsequently this is what i have observed acha so i now nowadays uh, i do uh, a double angle blade plate and get the lateralization of the shaft done mm -hmm. i'll just share a, a picture yes I, that will give an idea about how i do it so yeah can you see now my screen yes 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 yeah see these are the pictures i have just copied from the femur and uh, distal femur mm -hmm. so what i do is when the hip is loaded you can see that the weight bearing passes from through the middle of the knee joint from the hip joint to the knee joint but if you do a just a an angle blade plate and try to do valgus osteotomy you see now the weight bearing goes lateral to the uh, knee joint that is the one which causes the knee pain so what i do is i instead of using a an angle blade plate i use a double angle blade plate where the weight bearing is going through the, the center of the knee joint i have kept the angle blade plate as advised by dr magu outside about 1 cm we keep it out now we can see that the weight bearing is going through the knee joint what i normally do is i put a small bone piece and put a screw here so that uh, this mechanism is the uh, weight bearing mechanism is not altered so instead of using a single either the dhs or a single angle blade plate it's always better to use a double angle blade plate i'll just quickly show one case a, a basis cervical fracture with the screws in position again like the way you did before removing the screw i pass the uh, double angle blade plate barrel then this is the osteotomy i'm trying to do i have achieved a good valgus you can see that my blade is not entered too much inside i have kept it about 1 cm out the distal locking now i have applied a small bone graft and i have 
uh, whatever the wedge i have removed i put it as a graph there and i put a screw there so it will remain in that position this is immediate post op x ray 3 months 7 months 9 months see the patient is able to squat and sit down quickly most important you can see the weight bearing axis is going through the middle of the knee so i have done enough number of uh, primary valgus osteotomy but uh, all these patients i have had problem uh, like knee pain or uh, uh, unable to sit properly cross leg and that has been taken care by this uh, double angle blade play to a great extent and probably in the last 5 6 years dr magu came to sholapur sometime in 2011 or 12 he demonstrated this technique since then i have been doing only double angle blade play Oh, that's nice. Sorry for interrupting, but I thought this is useful. No, no, it is so a good thing. Excellent, to, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. So, do you yes. have any chance of developing a DHS of a double angle? Uh, DHS has a double angle. Hello. Huh? Yes. Hello. DHS Hello. has a. Is it Dr. Ginsi Wale? no somebody else has asked that question okay because the uh, his uh, picture is highlighted and uh, the voice was like uh, uh, dr sanjay dhawan anyway uh, dr panchanadikar wants to ask a question sir i already unmute you have to unmute and speak no you have to unmute dr vijay you have to unmute ha yes okay. yeah uh, yes sir so in getting the correct angle Osteotomy angle is important. That is one thing, definitely. Yes. But is it also important that what angle of DHS we use? Because, for example, if we are using a one thirty-five degree angle blade angle plate for DHS, and if we are using a one twenty degree angle plate, the corrections are going to be different. Yeah, yeah correct. So, yeah. isn't it important the angle that you are going to use, and accordingly you select your plate? Because it depends on the primary deformity of the angle with the first, with the in the initial, what is the angle? Then you will decide on the correction. Better to keep a proper range on the table. So then you yes. take the right one. So you don't lose your correction depending on the plate because the screw is going to be the same. The barrel can be changed on the table depending on what correction you want to achieve. Yeah. Right. See, if you have put put the screw at ninety degree, if you yes. use a one twenty degree barrel plate, you are going getting forty degree abduction. If you use 125, 45 degrees, so that you can that change you can do it on the table, which cannot be done with the help of a uh, angle blade plate. You have to be precise while you are using angle blade plate. Yes, and essentially your first guide wire that the insertion pin guide wire that you use has to be at 95 degrees. The first wire that you put to hold the head for your, either for your DHS or your angle blade plate, it has to be 95 degrees, and then you will turn it, and then it will come into place. The 95 degrees is very critical, right? The first one, the one which I was, uh, which uh, with the with the DHS screw or your blade, whichever you are using. But that 95 degrees inclination initially is very very important. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jinsi Wale, now your turn. I am moderating the session now. Shiva sir, Shiva sir, actually, actually we are live on YouTube also. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, there are many questions on YouTube that are coming up. So first, uh, let the YouTube questions come down. If we have time, then I'll go. Otherwise, no, next. Sir, no, sir, sir, we are waiting only for you. We can. No, we, are, we are waiting yeah. for you. So yeah, like uh, you can continue, and then uh, we will. Can have I uh, say something? Go ahead with the questions. We will. Can I say something, please? Yes, sure, sir. Let there the is one question, question from Dr. Mudit Jain. Post osteotomy, you bring the distal fragment to the plate or the proximal fragment down. Actually, it is a combination of both things. Yeah, you keep the plate where it is, and dire dire you abduct the leg on the fracture table. So you actually are bringing the fragment down and the fracture lat and the distal fragment laterally both together. Hold it with a just apna bone holding uh, clamp, and dire dire tighten your screws from distal to proximal, and the whole thing will fall into place. Yeah. It is a mixture of both, Doctor Udit Jain. No, it's actually a movement happens at the the hip joint. See the proximal fragment. Though you are bringing the shaft, again once the hip is brought to neutral position, the movement is happening only yes. in the hip joint. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Either you can bring the shaft to the plate and fix, or bring the plate to the shaft and fix it. As long as the plate is fixed to the shaft, that is fine. Right. Because important is you know don't be very violent in getting the plate 
write down immediately because the bone on the top is a bit sometimes porotic and in yeah. doing that sudden movement the screw might yeah. cut out a little bit yes. up so it yes. is better to abduct your leg completely hold the plate and the shaft together maybe fix one screw and slowly really very gradually abduct it inside to so the whole system will remain and you can fix it up completely then yes sir that the that experience answers that question yeah that's correct that comes from the experience sir we have raj uh, rajendra chandak sir over here he also wants to add up something yes chandak sir please sir <laughs> kapadi sir how do you manage uh, retroversion usually associated with intercapsular non union in a high power uh, it is not very easy to manage that on the table but then uh, what you can do is you know when you are putting your head screw you the remaining two or three screws don't take out all of them at the same time keep one of the implants inside and then plan your screw with the proper direction so once you put in your main screw then you can internal external rotate the leg and compensate the rotation in the plate okay thank you there another question by dr aditya over here so dhs will give dynamic compression at the non union site which is the main problem the patient came for will angle or double angle plate give this dynamization actually dr aditya it is not important for the fracture to heal the basic principle of the osteotomy is to align the hip biomechanics get the fracture horizontal and automatically it will heal your screw is not really dynamizing it to heal it in the overall picture if you look at it okay i think we are done okay sir thank you sir thank you very much thank you for everyone thank you for your questions uh, jinsi wala sir so we would like to continue with you sir hello jinsi wala sir i cannot see him ah uh, hi yeah Okay then, uh, Shiva sir, can we can we take up the YouTube question still then? Yeah yeah yes. Yeah. So like uh, there is one question from Vishal Yadav. He says that uh, whenever we do PF and double screw system while passing two guide wires, these are not parallel sometimes. It converge or diverge. Yes. Why this happens? Any tips to avoid this? Okay. See, normally because the trabecular uh, pattern in the hip, the superior screw, superior guide wire slightly bends inferiorly, and inferior guide wire slightly goes upward. This is normal one. So what you have to do is, if they come like this, not to worry too much. As long as they are parallel in the neck part, don't look at the head part. As long as near the nail, if they are parallel, don't worry. Just rim partly. Take the calculated drill bit, partly pass it till it is straight. Then pull out the guide wire. Then advance the calculated drill bit again. Then you pass the guide wire. So that will uh, pass proper aligning of the guide wire. That's one. Sometime it is going too much outside. Many a time, what we normally do, don't do is the lateral wall cortex. The 1.8 millimeter guide wire. We try to drill with the guide wire. So that's why it goes haywire. It slips against the bone and it will go somewhere else. So that should never be done. Always drill a hole in the lateral cortex by taking the centering out first. Then you drill only in the cancellous bone. Don't fill the cortical bone with the guide wire. That's one. And second thing is, if the guide wire gets even slightest, throw them out. Keep taking new guide wires every now and then because. Even if there is slight bend, it will go. On, the bend will keep on increasing. It's always better to use a fresh, sharp guide wire each and every time. And uh, uh, there are some instrument like Cobra foot is available. You make a larger drill hole in the bone and put a Cobra plate. Uh, means it's also cannulated. And if the guide wire is going inferiorly, it will direct it inferiorly. I normally don't advocate this to be done because uh, it can be a little more extra, and uh, you might have problems subsequently in drilling. So it's always better to just see that they are as parallel as possible in the neck part. Drill it over the guide wire till that part. Uh, drill over the cannulated drill bit. Withdraw the guide wire. Advance it. This is how I normally do. 
thank you sir beautifully explained and sir th there are two more uh, jinsi wala sir are you here i guess he is he is facing some network issues okay uh, shiva sir the, there are two more questions like uh, does pfn2 screw gives good purchase in porotic bones definitely yes and there is one more that uh, which would be better long pfn or short pfn might be this depends on the fracture i guess yeah yeah that's correct for subtrochanteric fracture it's long pfn or fracture may be long pfn otherwise short pfn is more than sufficient so <clears throat> how to change this double angle plate in a old fracture how to change ha ah. nay nee, as you have said that uh, dr kapadi has done single and uh, yes. double angle plate yes. how to remodify it in the see the angle everything remains the same so ah. only thing is the, sh the barrel plate is bent the, the plate part is z bent so ah. the shaft comes slightly out that's all there is nothing much in that the angle remains the same double angle plate plate whether you take 120 degree double angle plate or a single angle plate the 120 degree your angle osteotomy everything remains the same only thing because the barrel is slightly of the the plate part is slightly off you will bring the shaft laterally and fix it. that's all nay so we have to pull out that old plate old uh, nail in the oh. neck you you said that you have to put a graft bone graft in between okay that's why you don't have to put it inside too much you when you are hammering when it is about 10 mm away you stop hammering the barrel plate uh, in the bone uh -huh. and put a graft there so that it cannot go inside further because sometimes there is chances that in a osteoporotic bone this double angle plate the plate can penetrate into the joint so i have not seen one but theoretically it is possible that's always that's why as a precaution i put a stopper as a graft i put it between the plate and the lateral wall take time thank you sir thank you gupta sir shiva sir there is one question from your student gopal sir yes oh gopal sir is not my student he is my teacher if Are you have seen any of my live videos demonstrated on my youtube Majority of them, he has only assisted me. Uh, one in Chennai recently, in 2011, I had operated a case uh, during nails con. He was the one who assisted me. You can hear his name in the video. Yes, tell yes, me. Yes, so, sir. So, like his question is, uh, it's a general question for PFN versus PFN A2. Yes. As surgeons like you, many of them has faced problem after using helical blade screw in P PFB A2 implants. Yes. compared to the two screw done in pfn yeah. implant uh, still they demand for pfn a2 and stay says it's better than the later please give your valuable comments and convince our surgeons yeah even today's uh, topic name was given by uh, gopal dodwani only uh, he knows all the details that's why he is asking that question to me hey, as a surgeon definitely passing two screw requires more surgical skills and it is much more difficult passing one screw and uh, unfortunately the companies which promote the pfn a2 have come so vehemently in the market everybody thinks that helical blade is giving much more better fixation in osteoporotic bone so friends it is not the thing it is you and me who are surgeons who decide about the fate of the fracture so our technique should be proper so whatever the implant you use if you are comfortable in using a single screw system yes go ahead if you are ready to spend 50 lakh rupees for a mercedes benz car go and purchase it but use it correctly if you cannot afford it use a 3 lakh 4 lakh rupees worth maruti car and drive it safely that is what i am telling it's not that uh, implant makes any difference implant makes you comfortable If I go from Solapur to Bombay today in a Mercedes-Benz car, I'll be much more comfortable when I reach Bombay rather than when I reach in a Tata Sumo or a Indica car. Similarly, working is much more easier. The surgeon feels much more happy to use this imported implant. So use them. 
but get the reduction right that's all i want to say anything nothing more than that so sir putting this into the nutshell i can say that uh, either use pfn a2 or pfn but it's the technique that comes into the that plays the role yes technique makes the role but uh, there is 19 20 ka for us oh, okay 19 20 ka nahi 19 21 ka so 20 20 is not there so 19 21 ka farak hai so that you should know that pfn is better definitely than pfn a2 or any other implants available in the market but this farak is only 19 20 as i said earlier uh, that makes some difference when you are using it in some difficult cases like when the lateral wall is missing definitely pfn with a head group makes a life easier for you instead of putting a wire or putting a plate and other thing so this things you should know biomechanics of all the implants whatever you are using then your outcome will be proper hi sure. hi can i ask questions yes 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 sir now it's your turn itself no, no. sir <laughs> i'll tell you because it is a too long a lecture so i'll put certain uh, queries to all the audience uh, am i am i sharing it Can no, you share yet. my screen? Yes, sure, 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 sir, sure. You're most welcome, sir. Yeah, press the green button, six o'clock position. Share. Yeah, yeah. Share. I have done that. Then you click on the presentation if I have opened it already. Share. Yeah, now it has come. Okay. Go to the next slide. Just, just hold on. Just hold on. It's blank. Yeah. Okay. Can can you see the slides? No, no, no. It's a blank screen we are seeing. Oh, 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 oh. You close it, sir. Stop sharing. Open your presentation first. Just hold on, sir. the corona and the lockdown has taught me all this yeah, yeah i taught all the things but uh, yeah resume the no, first you stop sharing sir you are screen sharing okay i stop sharing yeah okay. now you open your stop presentation sharing. first okay i will open the open up your presentation don't yes. make it uh, full screen just keep it open mm -hmm. now uh, click on sh uh, share screen at 6 o'clock position green yes. button yes now you click on your presentation yeah correct you are come yeah now you can make it for oh, yeah you already full screen i'll yes. just enlarge it i'll just enlarge it fine so this is a question is it seen on the screen yeah it's seen it's an 81 years old female slipped and fell three part it fixation done did the surgeon do a good job what is what is the opinion of the house we'll ask dr vivek vijay panchanadikar yes sir next is rajendra who is raising the hand already rajendra you can unmute panchanadikar vijay because yes. it, the tad looks okay the fixation looks okay the ap lateral view looks okay that look okay but uh, the position of the screw doesn't look okay because inferior in the neck but already in the superior part of the head so, yes uh, vijay sir uh, yes sir that is the point which i want, wanted to make the yes. screw appears to be in the superior part of the head yeah correct it's yeah. going to give trouble yes. is the angle correct is the reduction angle correct uh, reduction is okay but as long as the screw position is proper then uh, reduction Okay. The... okay i'll get the next slide yes here the problem will be the screw head will not have purchase in the head properly it will cut through quickly that is the only thing i am expecting so it's so the did surgeon do a good job 90% will tell yes or no i don't know but what is our house opinion is no no yeah this is now consider specifically the reduction is satisfactory the tad is okay both are satisfactory neither are satisfactory see the anti version is not re uh, restored also so there is going to be a lot of stress over the implant and the sliding mechanism and the 
superior placement of the screw. I am expecting it to. Murgi, what are you saying? A failure. Yeah, I think it is in virus. Murgi, what are you saying? That is what yeah. happened. The virus head is there is going to collapse. Correct. Murgi, what are you saying? Tomato, what are you saying? What happened? जिलानी सर मुझे भी टमाटर होना चाहिए भेज दीजिए हमको भी भेज दीजिए प्लीज बॉम्बे में बहुत मुश्किल हो रहा है ये सब दैट इज व्हाट लैकिंग इज बेसिकली द रिडक्शन इज आल्सो नॉट करेक्ट इट इज अ शॉर्ट नेक देयर इज अ सुपीरियर प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द स्क्रू एंड देयर इज अ वायरस प्लेसमेंट यस हैज टू फेल सो दैट इज हाउ इट हैज फेल्ड so it looks okay but i don't think every okay x-ray is okay yeah it's only if the surgeon and patient are lucky then it unites yeah and yeah. 90% it doesn't yes. similarly happened in this way also same same again, again the lateral is missing here there is the inferior yeah. placement still it is not corrected in a lateral in severe virus severe virus. severe virus there there is a loss of bone here at the the lateral and lateral too many screws at the fracture site yes and, and long barrel and then i think i think in in the nutshell what i think the causes of mal union or non union is basically the placement of the implant that is what is in our hand and the structure fracture as well as the structure of the bone which is uncontrolled in our hand so and 90% of the cases shiva shankar what has told sir that is excellently we should do it 10% leave it to the bone quantum and the bone quality am i right sir uh, that's correct whatever the way you treat uh, 100% good reduction that with a dhs there is 9% failure rate so similarly any implant uh, it you cannot explain some of the time so it is going to fail with good technique also so at least as a surgeon we should be happy that you have done a good job and try to follow the instruction what has been given to you so this is a dhs and intramedullary if it's done properly it works very well on the both the sides i think 90% cases it is the placement of the implant whatever you use it and the reduction what you have done it is more important rather than the implant which normally i feel it i uh, what is your experience sir i don't know because you have done everything i think you have started with dhs the first then you have changed it to double screw and you have tried n number of implants and in all the cases shiva shankar's results are 95% okay in my opinion is it okay sir yeah yeah fine fine that's perfectly all right 90% okay it should be fine so which is what is the coffers has variable says uncontrolled factors we don't have a surgeon controlled fat is quality of reduction implant placement and implant selection i think you have given a excellent lecture for these all three points which we could learn it today excellent sir next time we will definitely have the mal union and non union of trochanter it's a big 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 issue sir okay Uh, so please forgive me for today's lecture because i have to go to another web webinar at about 1:30 uh, so i have to prepare for that sir thank you very much sir thank you thank no you. problem sir. no problem arjun arjun you fix up the date with dr jensi wale now on day and announce it yes sir i will uh, definitely sorry, you. definitely yes. definitely sorry, we'll have a good discussion we will have a good discussion on this also and sure. i am a follower of a single screw with pfn a2 so i will definitely have a good counter action with you sir next i would definitely like to hear from you sir yes thank you very much sir thanks a lot thank you okay